Social Bookmarking, Making the Web Work for You. What is this talking about? How social can a bookmark be? Well, we all know what bookmarks are, so let's think about them first and get back to the social part later. Bookmarks are things you stick in books to mark your place. Sometimes they're designed for that purpose, sometimes they aren't. But how do you mark your place when you're reading online? The easiest way to bookmark a website is to save it to your favorites folder in your internet browser. But how many sites can you keep track of that way? If you start adding folders to organize your favorites, you may still lose track of things when they get too full, or you can't remember where you put them. Pretty soon, you still have an endless list of links piling up, overwhelming your structure. So let's take a step back from websites and think about reading books. Do you have a strategy that helps you focus and remember as you read a book? Do you use a highlighter? Or post-its? Do you write notes in the margins? Or make flashcards? For many people, it's easier to read and remember things if you can interact with the text in some way. Using Digo, you can actually use these techniques as you read the web. Digo is a social bookmarking tool that works on most websites, but it doesn't require that you change the programs you use to access the internet. All you need to do is install a toolbar into the browser you're already using. The toolbar will add buttons at the top of your screen that make it easier to read, organize, and share the websites you look at. Let me show you how. How does Digo make it easier to read the internet? Well, when you have the Digo toolbar installed, you can use tools like a highlighter or post-it comments on top of the web. It saves these notes to yourself, so when you come back again, you can see exactly what you were looking at before. How does it make it easier to organize? Instead of saving a link to a folder, you can save it to a list, then add some search words, called tags, that will help you find it later. Saving your bookmark with Digo saves it to your favorites and to your account online, so you can find your bookmarks anytime you're on the internet. How does Digo help you share information? Well, if you take a moment to upload your contacts to Digo, you'll automatically be able to email anyone without opening any other programs. All you do is click on Send, type in their name, adjust the email as you want, and off it goes. You can even attach the comments and quotes that you've highlighted. Okay, this looks simple enough. I'd like to start organizing, sharing, and reading information this way. What do I have to do to get started? To start using Digo, you need to go to their website, www.digo.com, to create a login. If you like the idea of sharing your bookmarks on the web, using your real name will make it easier for people to find your bookmarks. If you aren't sure how much information you want to share, using a pseudonym will make it easier for you to stay anonymous. I'll explain more about the privacy settings in just a moment. When your login is added, they will send you an email back to confirm that they had the right information. Then you can click on that link and come back to install the toolbar. If you use Microsoft Internet Explorer, Firefox, or Flock as your internet browser, you can install the full Digo toolbar. If you aren't allowed to install toolbars on your computer or are using a different browser, they have an alternative, a mini toolbar gadget, you can use instead called Digolet. If you want to find these again later, after you sign into the website using the login you just created, you can find the Tools menu under your name on the top right of the Digo website. I would encourage you to take your time with this last step of the setup, adding a profile. Some social websites require that everyone sign up if they want to see anything on the website. Digo doesn't do that. Anyone who has a link to your profile can see your bookmarks. This is great if you want to use Digo to share links with friends, coworkers, classmates, or anyone else without having to send them emails all the time. But if you don't want to use the site that way, if you aren't comfortable sharing information about yourself on the internet, or don't want people to see your bookmarks, you should set up your account using a pseudonym, like I mentioned before. Whether or not you want to stay anonymous, I would encourage you to look at the privacy settings before you add anything else to your profile. You can find the privacy settings by going to the website, signing in, and looking under your name on the top right for the Edit Profile link. In the screen that appears, there are several sections you should look over, but start with Privacy at the top in the middle. The profile you set up on Digo and the bookmarks you add could reveal a lot about you, so you should decide exactly how comfortable you feel letting other people see this information. Once you take care of your login, toolbar installation, and profile, you can start using Digo, either by yourself or to share links with other people. Let's see the toolbar in action now. Going back to the website I added to my favorites in that first illustration, this time, instead of just reading, I can add a highlight. Or I can add a highlight and a comment. Now if I'd like to bookmark the site, all I have to do is go up to the top and click on Bookmark. Here I can type in a description of the site. Who told me about it? Why am I interested in this? Why do I want to remember it? Now I can add some tags. 
what would I want to use to find this again? I can add it to a list. Here I'm going to use my things to read. If I click on save and send, it automatically turns it into an email. All I have to do is type in the name of someone I've added to my contacts, enter in a message, and you can see my comment is already appearing in the quotes. I can click private or make it important or not. Click send and it's off. You've seen what the Digo toolbar lets you do. Now let's see what you can do with the Digo website. Here's where your profile makes your bookmarks social. The first thing your profile on the Digo website does is make it easy to connect to other people. You'll find many features much easier to use, especially the send button, if you take a moment to set up your social connections here. For email, if you want to send links to people easily without having to open an email application or copy and paste anything, you can do this whether or not they use Digo by uploading a list of contacts that are stored on your computer or logging into a webmail application. You can also make contact lists if you want to send bookmarks to a group of people. Once you've uploaded a list of emails, Digo can search through them to see if anyone you know is already using the site. If you find someone you know, either through a contact search or by browsing through the website, you can add them as friends, which links them to your profile and makes it easier to send them shared bookmarks. Or you can use it for other social purposes, like leaving them messages on the comments section of their profile. What if you don't know anyone you'd like to send bookmarks to, but you're interested in getting bookmarks from other people on a specific topic? You can browse through the Groups feature to find people who are already sharing information with each other using Deco. Or you can set up your own group for a project or for people that you know on Deco so that you can all find your links in one place. Let's take a step back from the social things you can do with other people if you're both using Deco and see what you can do if you're not. If you're researching a topic and using a specific tag to track all the sites you look at, you could send people a link to that tag and all the sites you bookmark will show up, including ones you keep adding. They'll also be able to see your notes or descriptions of each link if you've allowed those to be viewed publicly. They can also see related topics that overlap if you use more than one tag to describe each site. What if you have a broader subject that doesn't fit into one tag? Well, you can use the list to organize your bookmarks no matter what you've tagged them, so they're easy for people to find. Having your links in a list makes it easy to view all of the information you've added to the websites as well. If you'd like to use this list somewhere else on the web, you can publish it using a number of web tools. One really innovative aspect of Digo is the Web Slides feature. Any list you create can instantly be turned into a slideshow so that you can tab through websites as if you'd taken screenshots but you can still interact with them. If you'd like to make this slideshow available on another website, you could even embed it in your blog. So far, you've seen how Digo works to bookmark websites, and you've seen how it can make bookmarks social. So how does Digo make the web work for you? Let's review. If you've never used a social bookmarking tool, Digo can make it easier to read, organize, and share information on the web because it's smart about giving you shortcuts to things you already do like taking notes or sending links. If you're using another social bookmarking tool or a different technique to organize your links, you may want to try using Digo too. Digo is smarter than some other websites because it plays nice with tools you're already using. You could upload links from Delicious, use a contacts file from your email, or publish your links on your blog without having to spend a lot of time copying and pasting. If you don't think you need to change the way you store your bookmarks, Digo can still make your links more social because you can use just the website to connect with people who know about things you aren't aware of. You can't use Digo to search the web, but you can use it to see what other people have been searching for, and see how, one topic at a time, they're organizing all that information.